about 500 people a year develop in Australia, of, of whom approximately one quarter will die of their anal cancer. Typically, there are 100, 150 deaths every year uh, from anal cancer in Australia, 60% of which are women, 40% are men. Anal cancer is a cancer of the last few centimetres of the gut, so it's very different from colon cancer. Anal cancer is not very common in the general population, so it's about one to two cases per 100,000 population. In comparison, colon cancer is something like 40 to 50 cases per 100,000 population. However, in specific groups in the population, for example, people living with HIV, it's 100 times more common. Overall, it is more common in women than in men, uh, but in the men, it is more focused in people living with HIV. We look for things like bleeding or pain when defecating, but by and large, uh, symptoms may present after patients have a more advanced tumour. And so that's why a big focus of investigations is to detect lesions before patients develop symptoms. One of the big components is the HPV virus. So the HPV virus has many different subtypes, which there are close to 150 subtypes. There are certain types of oncogenic type viruses, but HIV positive males or men who have sex with men are at a very high risk, especially those patients who are immunosuppressed. We have a big multidisciplinary approach in which case we use our radiation oncologists, our chemotherapy doctors, our surgeons, our physicians. But chemoradiotherapy is the mainstay of the initial therapy and we're finding patients have an excellent result to that. And that was actually discovered many decades ago in the 70s. However, some patients also require surgery. We've taken it to the next level and that's the introduction of radiofrequency ablation. Radiofrequency ablation uses energy in the radiofrequency wavelength. And what we aim to do is to not only remove pre-cancerous cells, but also clear the high-risk DNA. One of the reasons we're very excited about Hamish and his colleagues taking on this new treatment approach is that the evidence so far suggests it is markedly more effective than existing treatments. It has the potential for essentially clearing all precancers from the anal canal and essentially winding back the clock in terms of likelihood of developing anal cancer. If we can avoid people getting chemoradiotherapy, which I believe that this sort of treatment will Absolutely. be able to do, then that's an enormous uh, step forward.